Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who's with us here today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. And it is Saturday, February 26th, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar and on the Hebrew calendar year of 5782. It's the 25th day of Adar 1 or Adar Aleph using the Hebrew alphabet. Um, Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And as we, we know, this is a leap year on the Hebrew calendar. So the month of Adar is split up into two. So we will soon be going into Adar 2 or Adar Bet. Um, that will be in the month of March and where we have the Festival of Purim um, next month. So we're looking forward to that. It is so hard to believe this. We've, we've actually been through two months of, of a brand new year, a calendar year in the Gregorian calendar, that is, of 2022. This is our last Shabbat for the month of February. So time is moving rather quickly. So this is the day that the Lord has made for us. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go over just a few things that uh, we have coming up in the upcoming week. Uh, Once again, we continue with our Bible study, which will be every week. Uh, We are in um, the book of Exodus. And we are going to complete the book of Exodus in the Bible study. We're, we will be doing chapters 32 to 40. Now, remember, I said we're kind of overlapping with Shabbat because uh, today we're not even going to be finishing the book of Exodus. Um, so we will be actually um, doing Exodus 35 to 38 today. Um, but um, we will be completing this week in the Bible study the book of Exodus. And we are reading the English Standard Version currently. Uh, that's abbreviated the ESV. We will also have Arab Rosh Kadesh Adar 2 this coming week because we will be beginning the new Hebrew calendar month this week before before our, our next Shabbat. So actually on Thursday evening, we will be um, celebrating Arab Rosh Kadesh Adar 2 or a dark bet and that will um as always we will also have holy communion and then um next week uh the first shabbat of the month of march which will be a new calendar month in the gregorian calendar will be the first shabbat of the month we will also have holy communion so it's almost like a thir- it is actually back to back that that they have been happening um, there's there's not much of a break between um, communion, between, you know, the two communions that we do each month. So this coming week, we will be having Holy Communion on Thursday night and then next Saturday, just to let you know. So we've got the Bible study coming up. We've got Arab Rosh Kadesh Adar 2 and Holy Communion. Um, and we also meet live in real time on our free conference call.com channel and everyone is welcome to join us you can join by phone you can join by website um and we meet at 8 p.m eastern standard time i do post to the social media platforms of miwi usa dot life gab and facebook uh there are links on how you can join Uh, I also want to give a shout out to anyone that has a specific ministry. If you're wanting to promote your ministry, whether it be music, writing, uh, whether you publish a book, if it's for the kingdom of heaven, uh, we are part of the family of God and we work together. So our way of tithing into you is to actually help to promote you in what you're doing. So we would be glad to host you. Um, and you can uh, reach out to me and we can set something up. We can use a Tuesday evening that we would ordinarily meet um, 
and I do have the ability with freeconferencecall.com to do an MP3 and an MP4 recording and have done so in the past. And once the session is over, you know, I will get, uh, I would be able to get those copies to you in an email then, and you can use them to promote however you wish to do so. So if that interests you, you can certainly reach out to me and we'll set something up. If Tuesday evenings do not work for you, um, we can set something up as well. And for those who have not tried access to freeconferencecall.com, you can try it anytime. Um, and the only thing that you'll, you'll get a message that'll say the host has not yet joined and I'll start playing music. But if, as long as you know that you have access. And if you're having trouble, um, you can certainly reach out to me. I have opened up the room uh, on other days besides Tuesday, um, and that's not a problem. So that's all I'm going to say about uh, the upcoming events and our general announcements. And we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit into lead this entire Shabbat service. Avina Malkano, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you first and foremost for life, life that you have given to us and, and the love that you have given to us because you love humanity so much that you sent your only begotten Son for us. And we love you for that, Father God. We love you for the day that you have sanctified as holy. This is the Sabbath, Shabbat. And we're honoring you and humble to be in your presence. It's so wonderful to be in your presence, Father God. We love you so much. And we ask that your Holy Spirit come and guide us, lead us, direct us in this entire Shabbat service. Open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart. Make us open receptacles that we can digest your word and take with us everything that you want us to, to grasp. Digest it, take it with us, integrate it into our lives and our walk with you. We love you. We worship you. We praise you. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. In Exodus chapter 20, starting with verse 8, it says, Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you shall not do any work. Not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servants, your female servants, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, this sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. And the Lord's greatest commandment you can find in Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning with verse 4. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Nahuto Leolam Bayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And the second greatest commandment, Yeshua said, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he also said the entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah, standing before God, we're going to say three of the blessings. The first one is the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer 
to their descendants for the sake of his name in love king helper savior and shield blessed are you adonai shield of abraham and the second blessing is god's might you are mighty forever lord giving life to the dead great is your saving power he sustains the living with steadfast love and with compassion gives life to the dead he upholds the fallen heals the sick and sets the captives free and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust who is like you master of might and who can compare with you o king who brings death restores life and causes salvation to flourish you are faithful to revive the dead blessed are you adonai who gives life to the dead and the third blessing is for holiness kedusha you are holy and your name is holy and holy ones praise you every day blessed are you adonai the holy god ma tavu how lovely how lovely are your tents o jacob and your dwellings o israel because of your great loving kindness i will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you adonai i love the house where you live the place where your glory dwells as for me i will bow in worship i will kneel before adonai my maker as for me my prayer to you adonai is for a time of favor o god in your great love answer me with the truth of your salvation and it's Kaim, the tree of life declaration we say this of the torah it is a tree of life to those who grasp it and happy are those who cling to it its ways are ways of pleasantness and all its paths are shalom bring us back to you adonai and we will return renew our days as of old Ayam Hahu in that day, and it is said Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day Adonai will be Akkad, and his name Akkad. And Akkad means one, or the, comp the composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified, amen, in the world that he created by his will, and may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout. And may he bring the Messiah closer, amen, in your lifetime and in your days, and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon, and say amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded, be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation spoken in the world, and say amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. And the blessing of Messiah. Say with me now. Baruch Ta Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Devar HaKayim, Mashiach. Yeshua, blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah, Yeshua. And say with me now, Yeshua's prayer, Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar to gather the children of Israel to come to worship. It was a call to worship. <laughs> I am going to pause it now because of copyright I do not upload any music on this upload praise and worship is very 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 important so I don't want to just we, we we do praise and worship I just want you to know that that we do do praise and worship because it's one of the most intricate pieces of any service 
um, because we are giving praise and honor and glory to our Father in heaven. So by all means, I want you to be able to do that, but I can't include it in the upload here. When I post to social media, I post songs before, actually I post Shabbat usually in two parts now, and um, I post songs before part one, and you can certainly use them for part one, and then um, I will post the, the, Shabbat, um, the Shabbat service as far as um, the readings of the Torah, the half Torah, the Brit Kadashah, the altar pole, and, and everything that's all included. In part After part two is posted, I also post a set of songs, and you can use them for part two of Shabbat. By all means, they are certainly wonderfully anointed songs by very good artists that are very um, praise and worship oriented and anointed. So uh, please use those songs. They're, they're a blessing uh, and very, very well done. So it, uh, if you choose to use other songs that you have that you prefer for praise and worship, by all means, this is the time that um, um, we're going to have you do that. I'm going to pause it now and then we will come back with the Torah portion, and we will do the Torah portion, a recapping of that, half Torah, and doing a recapping of everything, saying a prayer, taking a short break, and then coming back and doing the Brit Kadasha scriptures in part two. So I'm going to pause it now for you to do some praise and worship. The Torah portion this week is going to be Exodus chapter 31 through Exodus chapter 38, um, verse, actually, actually not the entire chapter 38. We're going to go to verse 20, and we will pick up uh, the rest of chapter 38 next week. Um, but so this week we're going to do Exodus chapter 35, verses 1 through Exodus chapter 38, verse 20. And the parashat is called Vakayel, um, and assemble, or and he assembled. Okay, beginning with chapter 35, parashat Vakayel, offerings for the tabernacle. So we're continuing with um, the tabernacle. Uh, this is real important and um, this is where Moses is assembling the congregation. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of Benai Israel and said to them, These are the words which Adonai has commanded you to do. Work is to be done for six days, but the seventh day is a holy day for you. A Shabbat of complete rest to Adonai, whoever does any work then will die. Do not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on Yom Shabbat. Moses also said to all the congregation of Benai Israel, This is the word which Adonai commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering for Adonai. Whoever has a willing heart, let him bring Adonai's offering, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet cloth, fine linen and goat hair, ram skins, dyed red, seal skins and acacia wood, oil for the light spices, for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, onyx stones, and setting stones for the ephod, and for the breastplate. Let every wise-hearted man, man among you come and make everything that Adonai has commanded, including the tabernacle, its tent and its covering, its clasp and its boards, its crossbars, its pillars and its bases, the ark and the poles, the atonement cover, and the curtain screen, the table and its poles, with all of its utensils, along with the bread of the presence. Also the menorah for light, with its utensils, its lamps, and the oil for the light, the altar of incense and its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, and the screen for the entrance of the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering, with its grating of bronze, its poles, and all its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hangings of the courtyard, the pillars and their bases, and the curtain for the gate of the courtyard, the pegs of the tabernacle, and of the courtyard along with their cords, the woven garments for ministering to the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the Kohen and for his sons to minister as Kohanim. Then all the congregation of Benaiah Israel departed from Moses, everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit was willing 
came and brought Adonai's offering for the work of the tent of meeting and for all its service as well as for the holy garments. So they came, both men and women, everyone whose heart compelled him, and brought nose rings, earrings, signet rings, bracelets, and all kinds of golden jewel jewels. Everyone who brought a wave offering of gold to Adonai. Everyone who had blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat hair, ram skins, dyed red, or seal skins brought them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver or bronze brought Adonai's offering. And every man who had a case of wood of any, of any use for service brought it. Also, all the women who were wise-hearted spun with their hands and brought what they had woven, the blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. All the women whose heart stirred them up with wisdom spun the goat hair. Also the leaders brought onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastplate, along with the spice, the oil for the light and for the anointing and for anointing and for the sweet incense. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing gave toward all the work that Adonai had commanded to be done by Moses, Moses's hand. So Benai Israel brought it as a free will offering to Adonai. Then Moses said to Benai Israel, see Adonai has called by name. Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the Ruach of God, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all manner of craftsmanship, to make ingenious designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, as well as cutting gemstones, for setting wood carving, to make all kinds of skillful craftsmen. He has also placed in his heart the ability to teach, both he and Aholiab, son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with wisdom of heart to forge all the works of an engraver, an artisan, and an embroiderer in blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen, as well as weaving. They can perform every craft and ingenious designs. Chapter 36. More than enough. So Bezalel and Aholiab are to work along with every wise-hearted man in whom Adonai has placed in sight and understanding to know how to perform all the labor for the service of the sanctuary, according to everything Adonai has commanded. Then Moses called Bezalel, Aholiab, and all the wise-hearted men in whose minds Adonai had set wisdom along with everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to do the work. They received from Moses the entire offering that Benai Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to build it. They brought free will offerings to him morning after morning. Then all the skilled men who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came one by one from the work he was doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for the work of this construction that Adonai has commanded to be done. So Moses gave an order and they proclaimed it throughout the camp saying, let neither man nor woman make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing more, for the work material they had was sufficient for all the work, with much left over. So all the wise-hearted men among them did the work. They made the tabernacle with the ten curtains of finely twisted linen, along with the blue, purple, and scarlet, with cherubim, the work of a skilled craftsman, the length of each curtain, with 28 cubits, was, was 28 cubits, and the width of each curtain was four cubits. All the curtains had one measure. Then he coupled five curtains to one to one another, and the other five curtains he also coupled together. He made blue loops on the edge of the curtain that, the, that was outermost within the first set. He did the same along the edge of the curtain that was the outermost in the second set. He made 50 loops in one curtain and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set so that the loops were opposite to one another. Also, he made 50 clasps, clasps of gold and coupled the curtains one to another with the clasps, so the tabernacle was one. Then he made curtains from goat hair. For a tent over the tabernacle, he made 11 curtains. The length of each curtain was 30 cubits, and the width of each was 4 cubits. The 11 curtains had one measure. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six other curtains by themselves. He made 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the first set and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the second set. Also, he made 50 bronze clasps to couple the tent together so that it would be one. 
Then he made a covering for the tent of ram skins, dyed red along with the covering of seal skins above. He also made the framework of boards for the tabernacle from acacia wood, standing upright. The length of a board was ten cubits, the width was a cubit and a half. Each board had two supports joined one to another. He did this for all the boards of the tabernacle, so he built the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards from the south side southward, and he made forty silver bases under the twenty boards, two bases under one board for its two supports, and two bases under another board for its two supports. Also for the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side he made twenty boards, along with their forty silver bases, two under one board and two under the next. For the back part of the tabernacle westward he made six boards. He also made two boards for the corner of the tabernacle in the back, so that they could be doubled underneath and in the same way to be fixed to the top at the first ring. He did this for both of them at the two corners. So there were eight boards along with their silver bases, sixteen in all, two under each board. Then he made cross boards from acacia wood, five for the boards on one side of the tabernacle, five for the boards on the other side of the tabernacle, and five cross boards for the boards of the tabernacle for the back part westward. He built the middle cross boards to pass through in the center of the boards from one end to the other. He overlaid the boards with gold and made golden rings for them as holders for the cross boards and overlaid the cross board bars. I'm sorry, I said cross boards, cross bars and overlaid the cross bars with gold. Then he made the curtain of blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen along with the cherubim, the work of a skill, skilled craftsman. He made four pillars of acacia and overlaid them with gold, having golden hooks, and he cast four silver bases for them. Then he made a parakeet for the entrance of the tent of blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen, the work of a color weaver. Also, he made the five pillars with their hooks and overlaid their capitals and bands with gold along with their five bronze bases. And I just want to mention, parakeet is spelled P-A-R-O-K-H-E-T. Now, this was the dividing curtain in the temple for the Holy of Holies. Now, as you see, what was given to Moses before, and we, we had this in our previous uh, previous Shabbat, um, when Moses was up on the mountain with God, he showed him the design. This is being taken place now. Um, uh, Adonai breathed um, his spirit into you know his ruach, into these people um, he appointed. He appointed Bezalel and uh, Aholiab and then other people that would help. They were they were they were given the ability to do this. And as you see, as we're reading, it's almost it, you know it is it is actually to the letter of what was specified. It had to be to the letter um, of what was specified. Chapter thirty-seven: The Ark, Table, Menorah, Incense, Altar. Bezalel also made. The ark from acacia wood two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide and a cubit and a half high. Remember, this is exactly to the letter of what was um, given to Moses. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and out and made a crown of gold for it all around. He cast four golden rings for it in the, in, in the four feet, two rings on the one side and two on the other. He also made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he put the poles in, into the rings and on the sides of the ark to carry the ark. He made an atomic cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Then he forged two cherubim of gold from hammered work at the two ends of the atonement cover, one cherub at one end and one cherub at the other. He made the atonement cover from a single piece with a cherubim on, on the two ends. So the cherubim spread out their wings on high, overshadowing the atonement cover with their wings, with their faces to one another, and the faces of the cherubim toward the atonement cover. 
Then he made the table of acacia wood two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold and made a golden crown all around. Also he made a border for it a hand width around and made a golden crown for the border all around. He cast four golden rings for it and, the, and put the rings into the four corners that were on the four feet. The rings were close were close to the borders as holders for the poles to carry the table. He also made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold to carry the table. He forged the articles that were on the table, the dishes, pans, bowls, and jars with which to pour out of pure, pure gold. Then he made the menorah of pure gold, of hammered work, even its base, its stem, its cups, its bulbs and its flowers were one one piece with it. There were six branches going out of the sides, three branches out of one side, and three branches out of the other. Three cups made like almond blossoms were in one branch, a bulb within a flower, and three cups made like almond blossoms in the next branch, another bulb within a flower. It was just so for the six branches going out of the menorah. Also within the menorah were four cups made like almond blossoms, bulbs, and flowers, with a bulb under two branches of one piece, a second bulb under two branches of another piece, and a bulb under two branches of a third piece for six branches extending out of it. Their bulb and their branches were one piece with it, and an entire hammered work of pure gold. He also made the seven lamps, along with tongues and censers of pure gold, he made them from a talent of pure gold along with all the pieces. He made the altar of incense from acacia wood, a cubit long, a cubit wide, squared, and two cubits high. The horns were one piece with it. Then he overlaid it with pure gold on top, on the sides, all around, and over its horns. Also, he made a crown of gold for it all around. He made two golden rings for it underneath the crown on two sides as holders for poles in order to carry it. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices, the blend of a perfumer. Chapter 38, Altar for Sacrifices. He then made the altar for burnt offering from acacia wood. It was square, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high. He also made the horns on the four corners from one piece and overlaid it with bronze. Then he made all the utensils for the altar, the pots and the shovels, the basins, the forks, and the fire pans. He made all the utensils from bronze. He also made a bronze grating net for the altar under the ledge around it, reaching halfway up. He cast four rings for the four ends of the bronze grating to be holders for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. Then he put the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar to carry it, and he made it hollow out of boards. He made the basin and the base from bronze with mirrors from the, from the women who served at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then he made the courtyard for the south side. The hangings of the courtyard were finely twisted linen, 100 cubits long. There were 20 pillars and 20 bronze bases, the hooks of the pillars, and their bands were silver. Likewise, for the north side, 100 cubits long with 20 bronze pillars and bases and the hooks for the pillars and their bands were silver. For the west side of the hangings were 50 cubits with 10 pillars and their 10 bases as well as the hooks for the pillars and their silver bands. Likewise, for the east side, 50 cubits long, the hangings for one side of the gate were 15 cubits with three pillars and their bases. Similarly, for the other side, on either side of the gate of the courtyard were hangings of 15 cubits with their three pillars and three bases. All the hangings of the courtyard all around were of finely twisted linen. The bases for the pillars were bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were silver. The overlaying of their capitals were silver. And all the pillars of the courtyard were ringed with silver. The curtain for the gate of the courtyard was the work of a color weaver of blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. It was 20 cubits long and 5 cubits high. Now, a cubit is 18 inches. Um, just to kind of give you that idea, when we're talking about um, 20 cubits, we're talking about a pretty, pretty, pretty big 
uh, measurement there, and we're talking um, when when we're saying one cubit is eighteen inches. Their four pillars and four bases were bronze. Their hooks, along with the overlaying of their capitals and their bands, were silver. All the pegs of the tabernacle and the courtyard all around were bronze. So we had bronze, silver, and gold. Now there are some um, some Bibles that will will substitute bronze for copper as well. So just so you know, um, if you've got a version of the Bible that reads that, um, that's that's okay. It's it's this it's referring to the to the same. Well, it's not quite the same element, but actually, um, it's the substitute for the bronze. So that is the end. That is the end of this Torah portion for this week. And next week, we're, we're going to actually complete um, the book of Exodus um, with Parashat Pekadeh. Um, and um, so we will pick up the rest of this. Okay, so we're going to recap on this for the moment before we go into the half Torah. In this week's Torah study, we are blessed with a double portion of the Word of God, um, actually. Because this is looking back to um, really um, what Moses was given, um, what Moses was given on the mountain, and then we see um, that it's that it's happening um, that God breathed breathed this skill, you know, into the selected individuals. He selected these people, and and they have the ability suddenly to do what it is that they were called to do. Um, very interesting. Moses assembled the people. He underscored the fact that the message he was conveying to them was not his own, but Adonai's. Um, and the message included a set of instructions for living a godly lifestyle. And Benai Israel uh, entered into covenant with, with Adonai the God of Israel to do what he commanded and um, they were not ex they were expected to not only listen to the message but to follow through and to apply this to their to their lives and turning from their former ways well likewise for us we are not just to be hearers of the word of God we are also to do what he has commanded us to do as well and again, in this in this parashah, Adonai lays out consequences for not obeying, um, and also and he he addresses Shabbat again, and and specifically says, for six days work may be done, but on the seventh day, you shall have a holy day, a Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord, and whoever does work on it shall be put to death. So that was very severe back in in that day. Also in this week's reading, um, we see that the sanctuary, the tabernacle, is completed and anointed with holy anointing oil. Aaron and his sons are initiated. Um, well, actually, that's going to be next week in, in, um, in Exodus. It will be completed. Um, but it is being built um, at this point. So um, it's very... Um, interesting how this was this was brought to Moses uh, and Moses was seen um, the temple in 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 heaven um, and it was replicated the tabernacle is 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 the tabernacle was in, in the desert in the wilderness or the desert um, and they could actually pack it up and move now later on um, when Solomon builds the temple it is it is actually the exact replica um, in heaven as as well. It's set up the same way um, with the outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. But this was more or less the the mobile the mobile temple, which is known as the tabernacle, and the parsha Bakayel. Um, Bakayel it means to, to assemble, convene, gather. It's related to kahal, which is 
K-A-H-A-L, meaning assembly, convocation, and congregation. The word kahila is a derivative word. It can mean community, and that's spelled K-E-H-I-L-L-A. Okay. Most Messianic congregations refer to them as, as a community rather than church, since um, that word is not derived from Hebrew. It's actually Greek, um, the ecclesia. Uh, less than a week earlier, um, the community of Israel that assembled before Moses had worshipped the golden calf, as we uh, had seen, and Moses now instructs them in the ways of Adonai. He first instructed them regarding the Sabbath, um, as we had, had said, um, and very, very important. Um, there are two words for work in Hebrew, avodah, A-V-O-D-A-H, and melaka, M-A-L-E-K-A-H. And the one used in, in, you know, in the passage this week does not typically mean physical exertion. Um, for in six days work, Malachi is to be done. Uh, but the seventh day shall be your holy day, a holy day of rest. Okay. Malachi traditionally interpreted as, as, as the 39 different categories of work that went into building the tabernacle is the type of work specified in Exodus 35, uh, verse 2. There's some degree of interpretation regarding what type of work it, it indicates, and the Bible specifically forbids some types uh, outright, lighting a fire, carrying a burden, um, and it is constructive. Essentially, uh, the work is constructive, creative work that involves producing, making, or creating anything that demonstrates humankind's mastery over nature. Since God created in the six days and rested on the seventh, when we rest on the seventh, we are declaring that he is the ultimate creator and master. Avadah is also work, but often in the form of cultivating or performing service, whether free or slave. So therefore, both Avadah and Malachi are mentioned as forbidden on Shabbat. And no, um, the death penalty does not exist today for violation of, of Sabbath, but the command to keep it holy still does stand because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he really does advocate that we keep, we keep Shabbat. The seventh day Sabbath, the Bible defines Sabbath day, Shabbat, as the seventh day, and that is Friday evening at sundown to Saturday evening sundown, not the first or any other day of the week. Nothing in the Bible commands Shabbat, Sabbath, to be kept on another day. Because of that, it is clear to think that we simply do not have the authority to change God's holy days. And we don't. These are appointed Moedim. These are appointed days that God ordained. And he named Moedim appointed times. According to Daniel, that will constitute acting in the spirit of the Antichrist, the Anti-Messiah, who will seek to change the times and the laws. And Daniel said, he will uh, about the antichrist the anti messiah he will speak out against the most high and wear down the saints of the highest one and he will intend to make alterations in times and in law and they will be given into the hand for times times and a half time and a half a time so this becomes the great debate why do many keep, many christians keep sunday as sabbath who initiated and sanctioned this change in the times and the law in, in the Torah? It is generally acknowledged that the reason many keep Sunday instead of Saturday is because of Roman, the Roman Catholic Church changed the day to Sunday, believing it had the authority to do so. Now don't get mad at me. This is, <laughs> this is the history. Um, 
I'm just the messenger telling telling the facts. The following two, co two quotes from Catholic publications reflect this stance. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the church in the Council of Laodicea AD 364 transferred the solemn, solemn, solemnity to Sunday. And this is in, in parentheses, the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, 1957. Yeshua on the Shabbat Sabbath. The observance of the Shabbat is often perceived as burdensome. Those, however, who do it, keep it sincerely, seeking the Lord, experiencing wonderful rest and great joy on this day. Even Yeshua and his disciples. It's Jesus and the disciples in Hebrew is tel Talmidim, T-L-M-I-D-I-M, kept the Shabbat. And the Brit Kadashah, the New Covenant, states that it was his custom to be in the synagogue on that day, a custom shared by Paul. Yeshua never spoke against keeping, the sh keeping Shabbat and completely acknowledged it, calling himself the Lord of the Shabbat. There were a few situations in which Yeshua's commitment to Torah and Sabbath were called into question by the religious leaders of his day. He took these opportunities to address some errors in the way the commandment was being applied. For instance, one day when Yeshua's disciple, disciples were walking through the grain fields on Shabbat, they picked heads of grain to eat because they were hungry. The Pharisees objected to this because reaping is considered melaka or work that particular type of work therefore they accused the disciples of breaking the shabbat saying look your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the sabbath of course the disciples were not picking grain for the purpose of harvesting they were simply satisfying immediate hunger and yeshua essentially rebuked them pointing to the fact that David and his companions entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread when they were suffering from extreme hunger. In, in understanding the Shabbat, um, one should keep, one should feast on this day. In fact, the only times um, the law permits fasting on Shabbat is on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So yes, it is okay to eat. <laughs> Yeshua also pointed out that the priests are not guilty of breaking the Sabbath when they do their appointed work in the temple. Immediately after this discussion, Yeshua entered the synagogue and saw a man with a withered hand. He was then asked if it was lawful to heal on the Sabbath. He answered, what man is there among you who has a sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out. How much more valuable than is a man than a sheep. So then it is it is lawful to do good on Sabbath. So Yeshua was pointing out to the priests that they were not guilty of breaking Sabbath when they were doing their work in the temple, when they were doing sermons and they were they were uh, ministering to the people. So also healing was also part of ministering and that that was okay. So he was pointing out the differences here. Okay, although Pharisaic, that's the Pharisees, Judaism might have been divided on this issue during the time of Yeshua. This principle that Yeshua is teaching here actually became Jewish law and is taught today in Orthodox Judaism. For that reason here, um, and again, and actually, um, there's emergency services actually do run on Shabbat uh, in the Holy Land. It is a principle of Jewish law that preserving human life overrides virtually any other religious consideration. Therefore, therefore, for instance, if a sidewalk is icy on the Sabbath, putting down salt, though it's considered work, it's encouraged uh, to order uh, in order to prevent injury. Sunday is our mark of authority the church is above the but is above the bible and this transference of sabbath observance is proof of that and that was what the catholic Rec record london ontario in 1923 that, that is another um another um statement made by the catholic church why um shabbat was changed to sunday and it 
and they just took it upon themselves to do so. Um, and there's other, um, there's other reasons and, you know, other reasons that I'm not even going to go into at this point. Um, you can do your own research is all I'm going to say. Um, but really the seventh day, when we look at the seventh day of the week, when we're, we're talking Sunday being the first day of the week, the seventh day indeed is Saturday. So um, there you go. <laughs> The material for God's dwelling place take, um, it was was made in this week's Torah portion. Uh, and there was a free will offering, a teruma. Uh, it's different from the tithe, within, which in Hebrew is ma'asar, ma uh, M-A apostrophe A-S-E-R, from the Hebrew word E-S-E-R, e -E meaning ten, the, the tenth. The, the tenth is a tithe, but this is a free will offering that was made by the people. Moses called for a free will offering. Now remember, the people left Egypt. They had spoiled Egypt with all these materials, so they had had them. Um, God made them very rich as they left Egypt, so they were bringing in this free will offering. While this offering went above and beyond their regular tithe, there was no set amount. It was whatever the Lord put on in their hearts to bring, but that did not result in a small offering. Indeed, God stirred up the hearts of the people to bring their offerings for the work of the Lord to such a degree that the people liberally liberally donated building materials. So true was their spirit of generosity that they gave more than enough, and Moses had actually had to command them to stop giving. They just had too much, so they were giving um, because they... It was on their hearts to do so. Um, so God loves a cheerful giver and promises to provide abundantly and response um, is, is what is thought as well. So um, what was happening was in, in this Torah portion was exactly what was given to Moses um, and Bezalel and Bezalel and actually a, a book, say this again, and Aholiab um, were chosen. Um, Aholiab was, was his uh, assist, kind of like a, an assistant. Um, he was from the tribe of Dan, and Bezalel was from the tribe of Judah. Um, he was named as, uh, say, as the master craftsman, Bezalel. And apparently, there's, as, as we discovered, there's a uh, uh, schools of art in the name of Bezalel in, in the Holy Land, actually, um, in different areas. Bezalel is descended from the powerful tribe of Judah, which represents royalty and rulership. And we know Yeshua comes from the tribe of Judah. He is filled with the spirit of wisdom, Kokma, which is C H O C H M A H, and understanding Bana. B-I-N-A-H, and knowledge, that D-A apostrophe A-T, to, be, to build the divine sanctuary. So, um, Bezalel was fully equipped by Adam to complete the task set before him. So, and we see, as it's described in the Torah portion, we see uh, it is exactly... Um, done uh, to the specifications that were actually given to Moses. Okay. Now for us, we also have good works that God has appointed us to accomplish in our lifetime, and God will equip us with whatever we need to complete them. And now we're going to move into the half Torah portion, and we've got two Readings from the half Torah. We're going to do the first one, which is First Kings, chapter seven, verse one to fifty-one. This is Solomon's palace complex. But it took Solomon thirteen years to build and complete his own palace. He also built the forest house of Lebanon. Its length was a hundred cubits, its width fifty cubits, and its height thirty cubits. Built of four rows of cedar pillars with cedar beams upon the pillars, 
It was paneled with cedar above the side chambers, which were on 45 pillars, 15 in a row, and there were window frames in three rows with window up, window opposite window in three ranks, and all the doorways had rectangular frame and with window opposite to, to window in three tiers. He also made a portico of columns 50 cubits long and 30 cubits wide with a porch in front. And in front of that were pillars and overhanging roof and an overhanging roof. He also made the hall of the throne where he would judge the hall of justice. It was paneled with cedar from the floor to the ceiling. His house where he would dwell set farther back of the hall was of the same construction. He also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom Solomon had taken to wife. All these were made of expensive stones, stone cut to size and sawed with saws inside and outside from the foundation to the top and from the outside to the great court. The foundation was also made of expensive stones, huge stones, stones eight cubits and stones ten cubits. Above were expensive stones cut to measure in cedar wood. The surrounding great courtyard had three rows of cut stone and rows of cedar beams, the same as the inner court of the house of Adonai and the portico of the house. Hiram, the bronze craftsman. Okay, remember, now we had we had a craftsman in the Torah portion, and now we have Hiram, the bronze craftsman. King Solomon sent for and had Hiram brought from Tyre. He was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali, while his father was a man of Tyre, a coppersmith, and he filled with wis he was filled with wisdom, understanding, and skill to do any work in bronze. So he came to King Solomon and executed all his work. He fashioned the two bronze pillars, eighteen cubits high and twelve cubits in circumference each. He also made two capitals of molten bronze. To set upon the tops of the pillars, the height of each capital was five cubits. Nettings and lattice work and twisted threads of chain work for the capitals were on top of the pillars, seven for the one capital and seven for the other capital. So he made the pillars, which he rose upon the granites all around the netting, covering the capitals on top of each capital. The capital, the capitals that were on top of the pillars in the portico were of lily design four cubits high. So also the capitals and the two pillars close to the belly next to the netting were the pomegranates and rows of 200 around both capitals. Thus he set up the pillars at the porticos of the temple. He set up the right pillar and named it Jokin, and he set up the left pillar and named it Boaz. On the top of the pillars was a little design, so the work of the pillars was finished. Next he made the sea of cast metal 10 cubits across from brim to brim circular in form five cubits in height in its height and 30 cubits in circumference under its brim there were gourds encircling it 10 per cubit completely surrounding the sea the gourds were cast in the two rows in one piece with it it stood on 12 oxen three facing north three facing west three facing south and three facing east and the sea was set on top of them and all their rear parts were inward it was a hand breadth Thick, and its brim was made like the brim of a cup. Like the petals of a lily, it held 11,000 gallons. Then he made 10 bases of bronze. The length of each base was four cubits, the width four cubits, and the height three cubits. The structure of the bases was as follows. They had borders and borders between the frames and on the borders. They were below the frames were, that were below the frames were lions, oxen, cherubim. On the frames there were a, was a pedestal manner above and beneath the lines and oxen were wreaths of hanging work. Each base had four bronze wheels with bronze axles. Its four legs had brackets. The brackets were beneath the labor cast with wreaths at each side. Its opening inside the crown at the top of the cubit at the top was a cubit high and its opening was round like the design of a pedestal, a cubit and a half and also on its opening were engravings, and their borders were square, not round. The four wheels were underneath the borders, and the axles of the wheels were in the base. The height of a wheel was a cubit and a half, and the structure of the wheels was like the structure of a chariot wheel. There, 
Their axle trees, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all cast metal. There were four brackets at the four corners of each base. Each bracket was of one piece with the base itself. On top of the base, there was a band half a cubit high and circling it. Its braces and its borders were part of it on the plates of the braces and on its borders, the engraved cherubim lines and palm trees, wherever there was clear space around each. With encircling wreaths, he made the ten bases like this, all of them cast from the same mold, the same size, and same shape. Then he made ten basins of bronze. One basin held 220 gallons. Each basin was four cubits, and on each of the ten bases was one basin. Then he set up the labor stands, five on the right side of the house and five on the left side of the house, and set up the sea of cast metal on the right side of the house eastward toward the south. Then Hiram made the basins, the shovels, and the sprinkling bowls. So Hiram finished doing all the work that he performed for King Solomon on Adonai's house. The two pillars, the two bowls, and the capitals that were on top of the pillars, the two nettings to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on top of the pillars, the 400 pomegranates for the two nettings, two rows of pomegranates for each to cover the two bowls of the capitals on top of the pillars, the 10 bases and the 10 basins on the bases, the one seat and the 12 oxen under the sea, the pots, the shovels, and the basins. All these vessels Hiram made for King Solomon in the house of Adonai were made of polished bronze. The king had them cast in the plain of the Jordan with clay of the ground between Sukkot, Sukkot and Zarephan. Solomon left all the vessels unweighed because they were too many. There were just too many. Uh, the weight of the bronze could not be determined. So Solomon made all the equipment that was to be in the house of Adonai, the golden altar, the table, on which was the bread of the presence of gold, the menorahs, five on the, on the right side and five on the left in the front of the inner sanctuary of pure gold, the flowers, the lamps, and the tongues of gold, the cups, the snuffers, the bowls, and the wick trimmers, and the fire pans of pure gold, and the, and the hinges for the doors of the inner house and the holy of holies, and for the doors of the house that is of the temple of gold. When all the work that King Solomon did in Adonai's house was finished, Solomon brought in the things that his father David had dedicated, the silver, the gold, and the vessels, and put them in the treasuries of the house of Adonai. And that is the end of the first reading of the half Torah portion. And you see this is a parallel to uh, the building of the tabernacle, and this is the building of the temple, the house of God, the house of Adonai. And we have the second reading um, for the half Torah portion is Ezekiel chapters 45 and 46, essentially. So we're going to have Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 1 through 46, verse 24. Levitical land, when you allot the land for inheritance, set apart an offering to Adonai, a holy portion of the land. The length will be 25,000 and the width will be 10,000. It will be holy within all its surrounding borders. Out of this, there will be the holy place, 500 long by 500 wide square all around and 50 cubits for the open land surrounding it. From this area, you are to measure a length of 25,000 and a width of 10,000 in which will be the sanctuary, which is most holy. It is to be the holy portion of the land for the Kohanim ministering in the sanctuary who draw near to serve at a night. It will be a place for their houses as well as a place consecrated for the sanctuary. An area 25,000 Long by 10,000 wide will be for the Levites, the ministers of the house. It will be a possession for themselves, 20 chambers. You will give the city possession of an area 5,000 wide by 25,000 long alongside the offering of the holy allotment. It will be for the whole house of Israel. The prince's allotment. The prince will have another, will have a portion on either side of the holy allotment and the city's property adjacent to the holy offering, and the city's property on the west side, westward, 
and on the east side eastward, its length will be will correspond to one of the tribal portions from the western boundary to the eastern boundary. It will be land for him as a possession in Israel. My princes will no longer oppress my people. They will give land to the house of Israel according to their tribes. Thus says Edonai Elohim, let it be enough for you, prince of Israel. Get rid of violence and destruction. Execute justice and righteousness. Take away your oppression from my people. It is a declaration of Adonai. You are to have just balances, an honest dry measure, and an honest and an honest liquid measure. The dry and liquid measure will be of a uniform measure. The bath will continue a tenth part of a, of a homer, and the ephah a tenth part of a homer. The standard measure will be a homer be the homer. The shekel will be 20 geras, 20 plus 25 plus 15 shekels will be your mina. This is the offering that you are to set apart a sixth of an ephah out of, an, out of a homer of wheat, a sixth of, of an ephah out of a homer of barley, along with a set portion of oil, a bath of oil as the tithe of the bath for each kor, K-O-R, which is a tenth bath or a homer since 10 baths are a homer and one lamb of the flock out of 200 from the well-watered pastures of israel there are for the grain offering burnt offering and fellowship offerings to make atonement for them it is a declaration of adonai all the people of the land must give this contribution for the prince of is is in israel it will be the prince's role to give the burnt offering grain offerings and drink offerings at the feast, new moons and Shabbatah. In all the Moedim in the house of Israel, he will prepare the sin offering, the meal offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offerings to make atonement for the house of Israel. Offerings for Moedim. Thus says Adonai Elohim in the first month, in the first day of the month, take a young bull without blemish and purify the sanctuary. The Kohen will take some of the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorpost of the house and upon the four corners of the ledge of the altar and upon the post of the gate of the inner court. So you will do on the seventh day of the month for everyone who sins unintentionally or through ignorance. So you will make atonement for the house. In the first month and the 14th day of the month, you will have the Passover, a feast of seven days when Matzah will be eaten. On that day, the prince will prepare a bull as a sin offering for himself and for all the people of the land. He will prepare a burnt offering to Adonai for the seven days of the feast. Seven bulls and seven rams without blemish daily for seven days and a male goat daily for a sin offering. He will prepare as a grain offering an ephah for a bull and an ephah for a ram and a hen of oil for each ephah. He will do this in the seventh month on the 15th day of the month during the feast for seven days for sin offering as well as burnt offering, grain offering as well as oil. And chapter 7, thus says Adonai Elohim, the gate of the inner court that faces the east will be shut for the six working days. On Yom Shabbat it will be opened and in the day of the new moon it will be opened. The prince will enter by the way of the porch of the gate from outside and stand by the post of the gate. Then the Kohanim will prepare his burnt offering and his fellowship offerings. He will worship at the threshold of the gate and then go out. The gate will not be shut until the evening. The people of the land will worship at the door of the gate before Adonai on Shabbatah and, and new moons. The burnt offering that the prince offers to Adonai on Yom Shabbat will be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. The grain offering will be an ephah for the ram. The grain offerings for the lambs will be a gift of his hand and a hen of oil for an ephah. On the day of the new moon, it will be a young bull without blemish, six lambs and a ram. They must be without blemish. He will prepare a grain offering, an ephah for the, for the bull and an ephah for the ram, for the lambs, whatever his hand may reach, and a hen of oil for an ephah. When the prince enters, he will enter by the way of the porch of the gate, and he will also exit by that way. When the people of the land come before Adonai at the Moedim, whoever enters by way of the north gate to worship will exit by the way of the south gate. Whoever enters by the way of the south gate must exit by way of the north gate. He should not return by the way of the gate where he came in. 
since he must exit straight ahead. When they enter, the prince will come in among them. When they go out, they will go out together. At the feast and the modim, the grain offering will be an ephah for a bull and an ephah for a ram, and for the lambs a gift of his hand and a hen of oil for an ephah. Now, if the prince prepares a freewill offering, burnt offering, or fellowship offerings as a freewill offering to Adonai, the gate for him facing east must be open for him. Then he will prepare his burnt offering and his fellowship offering as he does on Yom Shabbat. Then he will go out. After he exits, the gate should be shut. You are to prepare a, a lamb of the first year without blemish for burnt offering to Adonai daily. Morning by morning, you are to prepare it. Also, you will prepare a grain offering with it morning by morning, a sixth of an ephah and a third of a hen of oil to moisten the fine flour. A grain offering to Adonai continually. It is perpetual statute. They will prepare the lamb, the grain offering, and the oil morning by morning for a continual burnt offering. Thus says Adonai Elohim, if the prince gives a gift to any of his sons as his inheritance, it will belong to his sons. It will be their possession by inheritance. But if he gives of his inheritance as a gift to one of his servants, it will be his until the year of liberty when it will revert to the prince. His inheritance will belong to his sons. The prince must not take from the people's inheritance, evicting them wrongfully out of their property. He must give inheritance to his sons out of his own property, so that my people will not be displaced, anyone from his own property. Then he brought me through the entrance that was at the side of the gate into the holy chamber for the Kohanim, looking north. Behold, there was a place at the far western end. He said to me, This is the place where the Kohanim will boil the guilt offering and the, the sin offering, where they will bake the grain offering so they do not bring them into the outer court to consecrate the people. Then he brought me out to the outer courtyard and led me past the four corners of the courtyard. Behold, in every corner of the courtyard, there was another courtyard. In the four corners of the courtyard, there were enclosed courts, 40 cubits long by 30 wide. Those four in the corners had the same size. There was a row of masonry surrounding them, surrounding the four. Boiling places were built under the surrounding rows. He said to me, these are the boiling places where the ministers of the house will boil the sacrifices of the people. And that's the end of the half Torah portion. So to recap, we are looking at, um, actually in that we're looking at kind of temple service there. Well, we're looking at service, um, but um, we want to focus definitely on um, First Kings, which replicates, which parallels um, the tabernacle, the temple and the tabernacle. So in uh, in the readings in Ezekiel, it was very, very much um, pointed out, again, um, and uh, treating people uh, correctly, too, because, um, you know, in, in Ezekiel's day, um, the ruling uh, company were not also doing what they were supposed to be doing. And um, Adonai was making it be known that, um, the violence needed, violence and destruction needed to be gotten rid of. Um, there, there needed to be justice and righteousness executed, and oppression of the people needed to needed to cease. And also um, spelled out very clearly that um, you know inheritance should not be taken away from the people. You know, if we look at what's happening in our world today. You know, look at the taxation without representation and and everything is taxed and you know inheritance is taxed and you know and it's actually again you know it's it should not be taken from the people um but anyway um that's a little bit of of the ezekiel half torah portion you know and also addressing you know how 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 Adonai wanted things to be uh handled you know, as far as the burnt offerings and, and the appointed times, etc. So we're going to also um, talk about the Torah portion um, 
also with the people of Israel being assembled by Moses and he reiterated the commandments of for them to observe especially Shabbat that was so so driven home um, by Adonai he conveyed that God instructs regard instructions regarding the making of the tabernacle um, and and the people began to donate material um, for that and they actually uh, had to be told to stop giving because they were so generous they it, it was really on their hearts to to do so um, and they got more than what they needed it was more than enough and this Torah portion um, actually um, went into detail of the construction of the tabernacle and it followed suit two in the half Torah with first Kings um, where Hiram of Tyre uh, was actually a, a craftsman um, of bronze and he you know in parallel to Bezalel, Bezalel in, the, in the Torah um, he was he was called upon to to build uh, the house of Adonai, the house of God, um, the temple. King Solomon called for him because he was an expert with bronze, an expert copper smith to create um, to create all the columns and and everything of the holy temple and and we read everything that he had done um, and he had uh, the right column he named Jachin and the left column was named Boaz. He did the basins, he did, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of the utensils and everything. Um, so it just paralleled um, the construction of the tabernacle and the construction of the temple. And that is the end of the Torah and the half Torah portion. And we are going to uh, close out with prayer and we are going to take a short break and then come back with the Brit Shah readings. And we've got several of those. And then we'll do an altar call and then close out Shabbat service for this week. Father God, we thank you. We thank you as we're moving forward in the Torah, how we see that your, how your holy place was constructed, how you specified things to the letter. You selected specific people in which to do so, and how it paralleled with Solomon, um, how much David wanted so much to build your house, but you told him that it would be his offspring that would do so. And we see um, that Solomon carried through with this, and he he sought out Hiram, who was also a craftsman um, in, and a coppersmith designated to, to help build the temple of, of God. We love you, Father God. We see how important Shabbat is to you. And we see that now, no one has the right to change what you call holy days and you call specific modim appointed times. They're what you designed and you designated and you've done them for, for specific reasons and you are a holy God and we need to be following your example you worked on six days and you rested on the seventh and and the seventh day in our week turns out to be Saturday and and that is the Shabbat that is the day of rest and we thank you for for making that very clear um, you made that clear to your people many 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 years ago and that is still holding fast today because you are a god that is consistent you don't change and unfortunately people change and they decided that at some point in time they were going to change this but you did not ordain that to be changed this was definitely made clear today in our Shabbat within our Torah portion actually we thank you we thank you 
We thank the Ruach HaKadosh for pointing out things to us as well as he is leading and guiding us through Shabbat service. We thank you. We honor you. We worship and we adore you. We are here with you and blessed and humbled to be in your presence. We love you, God. We love you, Father, so much. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. Amen and amen. Take a short break and we'll come back with part two of Shabbat service. We'll get into the Brit Kadashah scriptures. <laughs> 